Welcome back. Today we will continue what we started in the previous video. About volcanoes. Let's continue. Types of volcanic eruptions. Eruption styles are broadly divided into magmatic, phreatomagmatic, and phreatic eruptions. Magmatic eruptions. Magmatic eruptions are driven primarily by gas release due to decompression. Low viscosity magma with little dissolved gas produces relatively gentle effusive eruptions. High viscosity magma with a high content of dissolved gas produces violent explosive eruptions. The range of observed eruption styles is expressed from historical examples. Hawaiian eruptions are typical of volcanoes that erupt mafic lava with a relatively low gas content. These are almost entirely effusive, producing local fire fountains and highly fluid lava flows, but relatively little tephrit. They are named after the Hawaiian volcanoes. Strombolian eruptions are characterized by moderate viscosities and dissolved gas levels. They are characterized by frequent but short-lived eruptions that can produce eruptive columns hundreds of meters high. Their primary product is scoria. They are named after Stromboli. Volcanian eruptions are characterized by yet higher viscosities and partial crystallization of magma, which is often intermediate in composition. Eruptions take the form of short-lived explosions over the course of several hours, which destroy a central dome and eject large lava blocks and bombs. This is followed by an effusive phase that rebuilds the central dome. Volcanian eruptions are named after volcano. Palaean eruptions are more violent still, being characterized by dome growth and collapse that produces various kinds of pyroclastic flows. They are named after Mount Pelé. Plinian eruptions are the most violent of all volcanic eruptions. They are characterized by sustained huge eruption columns whose collapse produces catastrophic pyroclastic flows. They are named after Pliny the Younger, who chronicled the Plinian eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. The intensity of explosive volcanism is expressed using the Volcanic Explosivity Index VE, which ranges from 0 for Hawaiian-type eruptions to 8 for supervolcanic eruptions. Freotomagmatic eruptions Freotomagmatic eruptions are characterized by interaction of rising magma with groundwater. They are driven by the resulting rapid buildup of pressure in the superheated groundwater. Phreatic eruptions Phreatic eruptions are characterized by superheating of groundwater that comes in contact with hot rock or magma. They are distinguished from phreatomagmatic eruptions because the erupted material is all country rock. No magma is erupted. It is difficult to distinguish an extinct volcano from a dormant, inactive one. Dormant volcanoes are those that have not erupted for thousands of years, but are likely to erupt again in the future. Volcanoes are often considered to be extinct if there are no written records of its activity. Nevertheless, volcanoes may remain dormant for a long period of time. For example, Yellowstone has a repose-slash-recharge period of around 700,000 years, and Toba of around 380,000 years. Vesuvius was described by Roman writers as having been covered with gardens and vineyards before its eruption of 79 CE, which destroyed the towns of Herculaneum and Pompeii. Before its catastrophic eruption of 1991, Pinatubo was an inconspicuous volcano, unknown to most people in the surrounding areas. Two other examples are the long dormant Sufir Hills volcano on the island of Montserrat, thought to be extinct before activity resumed in 1995, turning its capital Plymouth into a ghost town, and for Peaked Mountain in Alaska, which, before its September 2006 eruption, had not erupted since before 8000 BC and had long been thought to be extinct. Extinct volcanoes are those that scientists consider unlikely to erupt again because the volcano no longer has a magma supply. Examples of extinct volcanoes are many volcanoes on the Hawaiian, Emperor Sea Mount chain in the Pacific Ocean, although some volcanoes at the eastern end of the chain are active, Hahentwil in Germany, Chiprock in New Mexico, U.S., Zuidwal Volcano in the Netherlands and many volcanoes in Italy such as Monte Vulture. Edinburgh Castle in Scotland is located atop an extinct volcano, which forms Castle Rock. Whether a volcano is truly extinct is often difficult to determine. Since supervolcano, calderas can have eruptive lifespans sometimes measured in millions of years, a caldera that has not produced an eruption in tens of thousands of years may be considered dormant instead of extinct. Volcanoes and Humans Volcanic eruptions pose a significant threat to human civilization. However, 
volcanic activity has also provided humans with important resources. There are many different types of volcanic eruptions and associated activity, phreatic eruptions, steam-generated eruptions, explosive eruption of high silica lava, effusive eruption of low silica lava, pyroclastic flows, the hairs, debris flow, and carbon dioxide emission. All of these activities can pose a hazard to humans. Earthquakes, hot springs, fumaroles, mud pots and geysers often accompany volcanic activity. Volcanic gases can reach the stratosphere, where they form sulfuric acid aerosols that can reflect solar radiation and lower surface temperatures significantly. Sulfur dioxide from the eruption of Huayna Butina may have caused the Russian famine of 1601 to 1603. Chemical reactions of sulfate aerosols in the stratosphere can also damage the ozone layer, and acids such as hydrogen chloride HCl, and hydrogen fluoride HF, can fall to the ground as acid rain. Explosive volcanic eruptions release the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide and thus provide a deep source of carbon for biogeochemical cycles. Although volcanic eruptions pose considerable hazards to humans, past volcanic activity has created important economic resources. Volcanic ash and weathered basalt produce some of the most fertile soil in the world, rich in nutrients such as iron, magnesium, potassium, calcium, and phosphorus. Tuff formed from volcanic ash is a relatively soft rock, and it has been used for construction since ancient times. The Romans often used tuff, which is abundant in Italy, for construction. The Rapa Nui people used tuff to make most of the Moe statues in Easter Island. Volcanic activity is responsible for emplacing valuable mineral resources, such as metal ores. Volcanic activity is accompanied by high rates of heat flow from the Earth's interior. These can be tapped as geothermal power. The Earth's moon has no large volcanoes and no current volcanic activity, although recent evidence suggests it may still possess a partially molten core. However, the moon does have many volcanic features such as Maria, the darker patches seen on the moon, pearls and domes. The planet Venus has a surface that is 90% basalt, indicating that volcanism played a major role in shaping its surface. The planet may have had a major global resurfacing event about 500 million years ago, from what scientists can tell from the density of impact craters on the surface. Lava flows are widespread and forms of volcanism not present on Earth occur as well. Changes in the planet's atmosphere and observations of lightning have been attributed to ongoing volcanic eruptions, although there is no confirmation of whether or not Venus is still volcanically active. However, radar sounding by the Magellan probe revealed evidence for comparatively recent volcanic activity at Venus's highest volcano Mont Mons, in the form of ash flows near the summit and on the northern flank. However, the interpretation of the flows as ash flows has been questioned. There are several extinct volcanoes on Mars, four of which are vast shield volcanoes far bigger than any on Earth. They include Arja Mons, Ascres Mons, Hecatstilus, Olympus Mons, and Pavonis Mons. These volcanoes have been extinct for many millions of years, but the European Mars Express spacecraft has found evidence that volcanic activity may have occurred on Mars in the recent past as well. History of Volcanology Many ancient accounts ascribe volcanic eruptions to supernatural causes, such as the actions of gods or demigods. To the ancient Greeks, volcanoes' capricious power could only be explained as acts of the gods while 16th-17th century German astronomer Johannes Kepler believed they were ducts for the Earth's tears. One early idea counter to this was proposed by Jesuit Athanasius Kircher 1602-1680, who witnessed eruptions of Mount Etna and Stromboli, then visited the crater of Vesuvius and published his view of an Earth with a central fire. Various explanations were proposed for volcano behavior before the modern understanding of the Earth's mantle structure as a semi-solid material was developed. Citation needed for decades after awareness that compression and radioactive materials may be heat sources, their contributions were specifically discounted. Volcanic action was often attributed to chemical reactions and a thin layer of molten rock near the surface, 